Hey guys, this is Gordon with Fascinated by Fungi. I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about morel mushrooms, and I don't have time, unfortunately, to go out and find them. It's also kind of hard with quarantine to get out to the areas where morel mushrooms would be growing here in California. So I will tell you about these ones that I got at the farmer's market and a few other facts about morels. Um, so morels are generally mycorrhizal mushrooms. They are uh, ascomycetes, so they're different from your traditional guild mushroom. They're more similar to uh, a truffle or what are called sac fungi, little cup fungi. Um, so instead of gills, they have these little sort of pouches and sacs. And the spores are inside of this inside something called an ascus, which is like a little sac. And that's the same kind of way that uh, the yeast produce their spores. So morels are closely related to yeast more than they're related to the rest of the gilled mushrooms, uh, which are called basidiomycetes. So Morels are pretty tasty. Uh, I think a lot of people are familiar with them as a very excellent edible mushroom. Uh, they're particularly good when you dry them out. They gain a lot of extra umami character and that's really delicious. Um, they can be hazardous. And that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is people know it's a safe mushroom, but you can get sick from them. You just have to cook them enough. So that's really important that when you get morel mushrooms that you cook them well. And so that means sauteing them in a pan off and dry. And then once they've rendered out some of the liquid, you will add a little bit of oil and maybe even saute and simmer them a little bit longer to make sure they're fully cooked through. People will get sick every year from eating um, morels that are true morels, but aren't cooked properly. So with that in mind, there are some other morels out there. You've probably heard the term false morel if you're a fan of morels. Um, and that includes other species. So there are you know, true morels, which are morchella, and that is the sort of primary species that people are talking about when they're thinking about morels. Uh, there are also morchella species that are called half-free morels, and that's when the, uh, the cap here doesn't actually attach to the stipe like it is on this, this specimen. Instead, the cap attaches about halfway up, so you can sort of pull the cap off. Um, those are good edibles. Some people eat them. Some people get GI upset. It might be an issue of not cooking them enough. Either way, that's another morchella species. Um, there's also... Verpa, which looks a lot like morel and are generally edible. There's Geomitra, which can be quite toxic depending on the species and are generally avoided as edibles, although some people love eating them and there's certain species that are edible and other ones aren't. Um, always exercise caution when you're thinking about Geomitra. And there's also Helvella, um, which are really crazy looking little sort of, <laughs> they can be white or black or brown. They're called elfin saddles. Um, and these aren't generally eaten, but I like to dry them out because I think they have a very morel-like flavor when they're dried out and make an excellent addition to cream sauces and soups and anywhere you'd use morels. In fact, I often mix dried morels and Helvella together because they have a pretty similar flavor and they just kind of um, enhance each other's flavor and texture. So that's, that's really nice. Um, one last note on morels. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of luck finding them necessarily, but you generally in California will go to what are called burn areas, and these are probably burn morels. Um, you can sort of see a little dark in, they probably have a lot of grit inside of them. Um, so areas with lots of pine or the conifers that have experienced a certain type of burn uh, that's relatively quick, um, it forces a lot of pine needles to drop off, so you have a really nice thick duff layer. Um, lots of morels will come up there. That's where you can find hundreds of pounds a day of morels, and that's what commercial foragers do. They'll go find a burn site and they'll search there. Um, the rest of the time, uh, I think you can find morels with uh, particular tree species around the country. So consult local guides or your local mycology society and, and find out where you can find morels. A lot of societies will have a spring morel foray, which might not be happening this year, but at least you can get some advice on, on where to go look. Um, I know apple orchards on the East Coast, uh, alders, you know, all sorts of trees, really depending on where you are. The Midwest has a huge morel hunting culture. Um, and there's some great accounts out there that can teach you about that. So anyhow, I hope you guys have enjoyed learning about morels, and um, I certainly hope to find some of these, but probably won't find any, at least not in the next week or two, uh, maybe later in the spring. Uh, I can go up to the Sierras once some of the snowmelt happens. I know this, the soil needs to be about 65 degrees to see Morcella fruiting, and I certainly hope that I can find some and that I can get up there. So we'll see. Uh, I think tonight I'm going to uh, probably blanch these and end up stuffing them with a little bit of like a sausage force meat and then uh, breading them and deep frying them. Should be pretty tasty. So anyhow, enjoy. Cheers.